What's going on guys? So as I continue this journey of exploring Android devices outside of Apple till, you know, September rolls around because let's be honest, most creators are going to be switching back to iPhone, but the phone that I've been using for the past week has been a phone that isn't so common here in the US and that is the Nothing Phone 1. I know what you might be thinking that I finally got a sponsor by the Nothing brand. You're right, except you're also wrong. It's nobody. So the Nothing Phone. Interesting name. So I've had an amazing time with this phone and I picked it up for around $280 on Twitter out of all places before Elon decided to lock me out and it's basically in mint condition. Now from a person coming from the iPhone, Samsung, the Pixel, and now this, I have a few comments to share. Now in terms of build quality, they knocked it out the park. It's very iPhone-esque as you can tell. So I brought an iPhone over just so you guys can see how iPhone-esque this phone really is. So in terms of the camera placement, they're basically in the same spot. This protrudes out a little bit more. We have the flash and the microphone modules in the same spot as well. The lock button is also in a very similar place. Moving over to the other side of the phone, the up and down volumes are pretty much in the same spot. iPhone has that switch to toggle between ringer and vibrate, but overall in terms of like how it feels and looks, it feels like an iPhone in my hand. And as an iPhone person who's been using it for a while, it, it, it makes me feel like I'm at home. The best way to describe this is imagine the Pixel series if it was built with an iPhone body. And I can tell a lot of time and resources went into the design and build of this because it feels like a solid phone, especially for its size. This, in terms of its dimensions, is pretty close to a plus size or pro max iPhone and how it's shaped. Now, let's talk about the biggest selling point of the phone and that would be the back. It's a transparent back, which is a bold move. Now, looking at the back, they have the Nothing logo printed on the back with some legal, legal information. You can also see that it's headquartered in the UK as well. We have the charging coil in the back for wireless charging, and you may have noticed the lights on the back when I sat the phone down. Now, they do have these LED strips in different positions to alert the user in some way. People will say it's a gimmick, but I've actually grown to like it because it's just so unique. It's only white LED strips, it's not RGB or any rainbow effect, but they have these cool patterns for notifications and whatnot. So let me show you that. I would never have that as my ringtone. That is so creepy. That's a cool one. That's a little much for a ringtone. <laughs> so with people who do have the device, there is this Easter egg where if you name a contact Abra, it will give you the setting to actually have music visualization. And it's because of like the whole Abra Cadabra thing. But if you want your music to kind of match the lights on the back, you can enable that setting. A little bit of an Easter egg. Now this does have use cases other than just looking cool for notifications. For example, if I were to open up the camera here and I want to have more light on my subject at night, I can just enable this and the entire back will fill up. So it's easier for me to take a photo for my person at night or whatever subject. Um, I can also do this for videos as well. And this kind of eliminates the whole purpose. I forgot I threw my iPhone over there, but it eliminates the other purpose of, you know, having another phone and, you know, 
holding up the light to get a better shot to make it look nicer for wherever you're trying to post it or for your own memories and stuff like that. So this does have other use cases than just looking cool for notifications. Also, when you charge your phone, it has a little meter here at the bottom to show you your percentage or how much battery life you have without actually looking at the percentage on your phone. So I think that's another cool touch that they implemented here on the back. My biggest gripe with the transparent back would be the glass back. Now, obviously it's a trade-off to be made and it's more of a premium feeling quality instead of practicality. And it's a design choice that they made, but I would personally, without a doubt, go back and get a white variant instead, simply because of the amount of fingerprints you can easily see. Um, unless they add some type of anti-fingerprint coating to at least minimize this, it makes the cool design on the back a bit unpleasant to look at due to the amount of fingerprints, but most people are probably gonna have a case on anyway. But overall, I love the design of this phone and hopefully they keep majority of the design features for the upcoming Nothing Phone 2. Let's talk about what we interact with most on the phone and that would be the software. This is pretty much a stock Android experience with a robotic skin. It's pretty bare bones. Compared to the Pixel lineup, it's nearly identical without the Google features. Now, for the sake of the video, I did go back to using the default launcher, but overall, it's snappy. The refresh rate is 120 hertz. The battery life gets me through the, through the day comfortably. My service has been great, but there have been some occasional glitches. This is probably more of a stock Android thing than the phone itself, but I'm just not the biggest fan of the notification centers at the top with the quick settings. It just takes up way too much space. Now, maybe I've been spoiled by how Samsung does their quick settings with the One UI, but this interface for me is just way too cluttered and there's no real way of resizing these buttons. The quick buttons on the lock screen is only limited to a few things such as, at least for me, Home Assistant, the Google Wallet, Flashlight, or the camera. Um, the font choice is also an interesting one as well. And while I enjoy the marketing for the Nothing brand, the font isn't the best for day-to-day -day use for main UI stuff. Um, I get the audience and what the brand represents and what they're going for, but even when I go inside the weather app, the icon used for what the weather is, is it's confusing. Um, if this didn't say it was like mostly cloudy, for example, let me go here. If I tap here, it says mostly cloudy, but if it didn't say that underneath this icon here, I would have no idea what the weather was other than it feels like 104 degrees today. How is it mostly cloudy and it feels like 104? What? Now you can keep the design, but maybe just add some colors like gray dots for the clouds or yellow orange for the sun, something that makes it easier to distinguish what's going on for the user. Now, the last mention is the native integration with Apple AirPods and Tesla. Now, they both work fine. Instead of the Tesla app, you can just do some of the quick settings um, at the top right here, which is great. The AirPods show the battery life, which is helpful on Android devices since AirPods aren't natively supported for Android. But when playing music over Bluetooth in the Tesla, the album cover almost never matches with what's playing. And what's even more strange is that sometimes it's just a black square with a white circle ring. I don't know if this is something that stock Android is doing specifically when transmitting the album art over to a device or Bluetooth device, but iPhones, Samsung, even OnePlus that I've tried have had no problems. And I know this might sound like a strange point, but I'm only mentioning this because of the native integration with Tesla that they've talked about. Other than that, the software experience has been Okay, it's not stellar, but it's also not unusable. For a first phone and a brand new company, I have my expectations set in place, especially at the price point, because I believe this phone launched around $500. Now, let's talk about the camera, and I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because it's average, okay? Um, I'm not blown away by the photos it takes, but like the software, it's not amazing, but it's also not unusable, like it doesn't take terrible photos, has a regular camera, has an ultra wide lens, has a two times digital zoom, it does its job. Um, the front camera, I will say, is pretty terrible. And if you have like 
any melanin in your skin like I do, you're basically just a black blob on the screen. So my recommendation is to just always use the back camera whenever you can. I kind of glossed over the display when I mentioned the 120 hertz, but I'm very happy with the display. It's not too bland, it's rich, it's colorful, it's smooth. Is it as fluid and vibrant as a Samsung? No, but it's definitely up there and it should be praised. It also has a Snapdragon 778G+, Plus, so it's not winning awards for performance, but day-to-day -day task, I never had any hitches with it, and the chip and battery itself is very efficient. My 5G connection has been holding steady so far. This model that I have in particular has 128 gigabytes of storage, eight gigs of RAM running on its own software, the nothing software. This also has a dual SIM, so that's also a nice benefit for international travelers or people who want to you know, have two SIMs in their phone. But overall, what do I think of the phone? Nothing. Okay, I'm a year late to the nothing jokes, but come on, let me have my moment. For a first attempt, I think they hit most of the targets. You can imagine a dartboard. They hit the board for sure, but did they bullseye anything outside of design? I'd say not really. The software is responsive, the display is great, but outside of that, it's kind of just average. And you know, with the CEO of nothing being Carl Pay and a lot of staples are being taken from OnePlus, their values, it really does feel like OnePlus back in the day with them trying to emulate selling you flagship qualities like fast charging, performance, software fluidity at an affordable price and skimping on everything else. Except with nothing, they're giving us flagship physical qualities and some features while skimping on everything else. The reason why they skimped on everything else is probably because they're doing, you guessed it, nothing. And with that, I am still on my quest to find the best Android for me. And so far, Samsung's lineup feels like it's in a league of its own. But the Nothing phone has definitely caught my eye and I'm excited for the Nothing 2 in a couple of weeks. Because even though it's average, it's unique and that counts in a sea of cookie cutter Android devices. That was so poetic. And with that being said, guys, hopefully you found this video informative. I appreciate every single sub, like, and comment. And as always, much love. Click. I'm out. God, the amount of fingerprints this phone gets is insane, man. What's going on, guys? So as I continue this journey of exploring Apple products, I'm exploring Android products. So overall, in terms of like the reticular, reticular. Now, let's talk about one of the biggest selling points of the phone. Now, this is pretty much a robotic, I don't know why I did that. For a four, 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 four. Get all the nervousness out of your mouth, boy. <coughs> Air quality is not too good. And with that being said, come on, you can do that better. And with that being said, guys, hopefully you found this video.